evening and welcome to the Sweet Life Cooking Demonstration June 2022 Summertime Small Bites. Our recipes for today can be found at the link below as well as in the chat box. If you have any questions, please write them in the chat box and we will answer them throughout our session today. My name is Megan Gonzalez. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes care and education specialist at the Mary and Dick Allen Diabetes Center at Hogue. And I'm here today with the executive chef, Chef Davis Cruz. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, Chef. Thank you, Megan. Welcome, good evening. Uh, my name is Davis Cruz. I'm the executive chef at Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach and I also support Irvine. Um, I'm also a CDM, a, a, Certified Dietary Manager, and I just uh, a few years back, I just got my uh, degree on plant-based chef. So a lot of the uh, recipes that we are heading towards uh, in the few coming years will be more plant-based um, uh, driven. Not all of them, but most of them, <laughs> if I have my way. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I fight with the dietitian. It's, it's, it's the reverse. Instead of the chef fighting that he wants butter and fats on the diet, I want plant-based, and the dietitians are going, wait a second, chef, what about your poultry? What about your eggs? And <laughs> so anyway, we have a great relationship. Are we, Megan? Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Uh, with that said, I'm also, um, I've been diabetic now for uh, 27 years. Uh, I type 1 insulin, uh, type 1 diabetic. I, I, I take insulin every day. I wear a pump, and, um, and it can be done. Uh, it's not easy, but it can be done. So um, some of these recipes, like uh, today, uh, we're going to introduce a flatbread that very few people or prefer using tortillas on the flatbread because it's easier uh, to manipulate the tortilla uh, in, when it comes to wrapping, correct? Your famous burritos. Um, so I'm going to show you a few tricks about the flatbread that is uh, a little bit healthier, or well, a lot healthier. No, yes. I just, yeah, a lot healthier. And um, I'll show you some of the tricks that you can use to start using your flatbread, whole grain flatbread or wheat flatbread that it can help your nutrition in general. Uh, versus a tortilla. Always remember, one tortilla equals two slices of bread. So that's the best way to put it uh, when you are estimating uh, how much carbs are you eating. Um, being a diabetic or being uh, having uh, uh, that disease is not the end of the world. It can be managed. And if you type 2, it meant to you, you have a great chance to reverse it by following proper diet. They say diet and exercise, I always say diet first, exercise second, but diet is the key. Okay, and we're gonna show you some of the ingredients that we're gonna use today that it will help your digestive system. And that is the most important. So if your core is healthy, correct? Yes. We are healthy. Definitely. So are we ready to do this, Maggie? Yes, let's go. Okay, we're ready to play with uh, flatbread. So I left one of the flatbread on purpose outside. It's been drying out, okay, so it's splitting, as you can see over here as it's splitting. So I gonna I'm going to use the one that is on a on a plastic wrap already and they come like this in this bag and it has a Ziploc bag. So the the main purpose is for uh, for the flatbread not to um, have air. Air tends to dry out the um, the flour on it. So uh, by having it sealed, then you have it playable, correct? So that's what we're after. Um, but on purpose, I left this one out. It's been out since we've been here about an hour. And uh, the reason is I want to show you when it breaks, what can you do to bring it back together, OK? So recipe calls for uh, cream cheese, uh, fat-free cream, cream cheese, and um, you can find a supermarket, you can find it anywhere. Um, I just got it from my uh, 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 patients in our, and we, we sell it, we have it in a small little cup, so uh, I put about eight cups here, so 16 cups here, I'm sorry. So I'm just gonna put in four ounces right in the bowl here. And as a chef, I just eyeball it, correct? Yes. Megan, not yes. a good deal, but <laughs> this but is four me. four ounces is according to our salmon and arugula wraps recipe. Mm -hmm. 
So it measures about half a cup, and that's, that's very close. If you weigh it, it will be four ounces, guaranteed. Okay. So for that, I'm going to assess a lemon. So I got my little sister here. So you can suss it with a thin little cest or with a more robust cest depending on your preference. But either or is okay. Can you see that? The reason we do uh, cest the lemon is it will give you that much um, flavor enhancement to the recipe and um, and it will have a little contrast with the smoked salmon okay we will talk about the smoked salmon in a minute so I'm just going to mix it here easy okay get it soft so Megan can we leave the cream cheese outside for a little while to get it softened correct as long as it's not too long. Uh, as long as it's less than, our uh, rule of thumb is? Two hours. Two hours. Don't leave it too long, but leave it room temperature. Two hours where you can just And it needs to be a little softened so we can spread it on that's the all. later. That's right? all. That's yeah. all. Right. Okay. So that's our initial cream cheese with lemon sauce. Okay. Now, I have the arugula right here. And... Let me bring them here. So let's move this to the side. So I'm going to put about, it says about four cups. Yes, four so cups of arugula. Two. Since it doesn't say press, it's release. So that's about three cups, four cups. Okay. Now here is where the magic happened, correct? <laughs> Olive oil, so we're going to use a pasta olive olive oil, black pepper, and lemon juice. So, well this one has a seed, they normally don't. Hmm. Okay, and if you see, so I'm actually making a dressing at the same time I'm mixing it with um, arugula. So I like to mix the uh, lemon juice first, then we're going to take, how much is that, a tablespoon? Two teaspoons two of teaspoon. olive oil. Two teaspoons of olive oil. So here we go, one, two, there we go. Now, The arugula, arugula, this arugula is uh, organic harvest. Um, uh, some of the wild arugula has a really strong peppery taste. This one needs a little help, so let's, let's add a little pepper to, um, to the recipe. Okay, I'm gonna toss it. All right. So ingredient numero dos, number two is done. Okay, so we got, let's put it right here. Oh, that's not gonna work. Yeah. So arugula, we have the cream cheese, and now we're gonna work on the salmon. Smoked salmon, it says cold smoked salmon, correct? What does that mean? Yes, um, four ounces. This one is sockeye salmon, it's not wild caught. Uh, it just, it's cold smoke because it's smoked at uh, 90 degrees temperature, uh, four, six, sometimes eight hours, and it just uh, cooks as a whole, then it gets uh, chill and sliced, okay? So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it in half, so you got one. So we need about four ounces of this, correct? Correct. So each slice equal portions. Tends to be tends to be about an ounce each, so it'll be one, two. Three. Uh, 
last one. So don't be afraid when you look at the uh, <laughs> flap reds uh, this time around, and then you're going to start using it. You'll be more comfortable using it, and then uh, you'll be able to, once you master or uh, you get comfortable using it, it's like, uh, um, like having a tortilla next to you that is a lot healthier, and um, it will help you greatly in your ventures of eating healthy. Okay. All right. And of course, this is a whole wheat flatbread, so it's got mm -hmm. the added fiber, benefits helping to lower blood sugar, and a little less carbs, possibly. I know a lot of you are saying, why don't you use the spatula? <laughs> I'm going to show you why. See the spoon, how easy it is? Clean it. And then I just want to have it right here in the middle. Okay? Make it that much easier. Okay? Middle. We're going to do the salmon. So, of course, our salmon is high in omega 3 fatty acids, which are very heart healthy good for helping to decrease inflammation. Um, for those who are watching potassium, it is a little high in potassium, so you could either decrease the amount that's in there or just know that that's a higher potassium food and just plan the rest of your day and week accordingly. Good way to get some greens in there. Mm-hmm. It's time to wrap it. So it's no need to wrap it like a burrito, okay? So we're just going to wrap it completely. Roll it like a little pinwheel. And press it. It's okay. Don't be afraid to press it. Just, okay? Then we're going to cut it in half. And then we said each half, we cut it in four, correct? correct? So yes. the best way is to cut half into half, and then half again. You see the trick of uh, cutting? So I'm actually holding, and I'm putting the knife in between my two fingers, and then holding this one in the back, all right? This way, you avoid from to roll, do not press, have, ha, let the knife do the job, okay? Let the knife do the cutting, correct? Then, okay? See, so we just look like this. Looks so nice and colorful. Mm -hmm. Look how many you can make small bites. And how far in advance do you think you could make this? Ah, ha, ha, good question, <laughs> Megan. So you can make this 24 hours in advance by doing this. Let me show you in a second. So then I just happen to have some of this around. So these are edible orchids, all right? So you want to present them? Very summertime. Very summertime. Right. And there you go. That took you no time, correct? Correct. Now. Yes. So let's make uh, let's make the the cracking one. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how. Great. So this one is dry, correct? 
So what I'm going to do is the rest of the cream cheese, put a little more zest. Would you recommend that you store these in the refrigerator? Uh, actually, they like don't this? have to be in the refrigerator okay. room temperature in your pantry. But if you're not going to use it within a week or so, just put it in the refrigerator because yeah. it's going to spoil eventually. Right, because of the whole wheat. Correct. Okay. Let's do this one. Mm -hmm. And then for zesting, you just zest just the surface, right? We don't want just to get the, the surface. white part. Mm -hmm. that's more. No, no, the bitterness, uh, yeah. the white part, just right. just uh, outer skin. Isn't that easy and fun? Yeah. Again, lots of vitamins and antioxidants in this. Fairly low, low fat, low calories. Fiber with the wrap. And nice and light too, right? For the yeah, summertime. Very light. Very, very light, very simple. Yes. All right, so let me add the rest of the arugula here. Lemon juice, what over here? Can you see over here? Yeah, okay. I'll do it a little differently. <laughs> I keep my teaspoons out, but he's the chef. So oh I can just my goodness! It. If I do that, every chef in the you go crazy, right? He will go. No, what are you yeah, doing, chef? I know. No, no, you're not representing us. I know. And you have a brother who's a chef, I aren't do. you? Yes, yes you I do. do. <laughs> I just don't cook as much and feel as comfortable, so. So he will kill me, yeah. right? <laughs> Okay, set that aside. This is salmon. So the first one I cut, but you don't have to. It's already pre-sliced. You can fold it in half. Just put it like that. So the salmon already comes cut like that. Pre-sliced, pre correct. Okay. Smoked and pre-sliced. Okay. So the smoking just adds a flavor. Does it do anything else for the salmon? No, it just it just enhances, it enhances the, the flavor. First, you brine the salmon, and the brining is uh, normally the normal traditional brining is um, sugar, salt, and ice cubes. Uh, keep it really cold, and then um, with water. Correct. So you brine it first. You take them out, and then as you smoke it, then you put uh, the mesquite wood or whatever wood right. that you're using to smoke it, and then you keep it at 99. About a 99 degrees. All right, so this one should crack. If it doesn't crack, I will crack it. But this is good, so we're not wasteful with okay. food, right? You think it's cracked and you have to throw it away, but exactly. So that's going to show us differently. If it cracks, normally it will crack here. Let's see, it's, it, and it, it's, it was out. Yeah. Long before, so you crack the here, are crack sand on bit. the end. So yeah. Okay. So what you do is take plastic wrap, okay, as this, and you want to wrap it tight, okay. So don't be afraid, just tight, 
See, right. can you can you can you zoom into that crack right there? All right. So most of them will be cracked everywhere. So just tight. Okay. Then get it nice and tight. Basically, so no air can get in. Correct. And then it will look like this. Sorry, I had to do it. If not, we have to wait <laughs> two hours. So normally keep it in the refrigerator for about an hour or so and let um, see how tight I got it, this one. So then See, it was cracked there, correct? But it's tight. Everything else came back. It was cracked here, and you see how it glue? I'm gonna pull it just ever so slightly. So you see that I'm not making this up. So you see how it cracks right there? Mm -hmm. It was cracked right over there. Right. Okay. So you can actually make them ahead of time, a day ahead, uh -huh. wrap them, okay. cut the ends, correct? Wrap them. Refrigerator, next day you come out and you just slice it, okay? Yeah. It's one in three. So it's just the moisture that sort of glues it back together. Correct. It helps them grow. Or we call together. it gluing, it's not really gluing. <laughs> And then I just happen to have so many of this. Let me get cracking and using it. And here you go. Very simple, delicious. Very nice. Don't have to use tortillas. Um, it's a good substitution of for a tortilla and a uh, healthier version mm -hmm. and uh, eventually you get so comfortable with it that you'll be able to do a lot more than just a simple wrap okay you right. can put, you can do any anything hot uh, that you can actually wrap it hot cut it eat it uh, it's very um, versatile to use look at me cleaning hey how you make no no <laughs> So anyway, uh, uh, flat bread in, in general is, is very pliable. Um, it takes a little while to dry, but it, it does dry, it does break, but wrap it up in plastic wrap nice and tight and you, you'll be fine. Um, never be afraid of, uh, if you have smoked salmon, just uh, sliced chicken, correct? Okay. Or tofu. Sure. Yeah, yeah. fried tofu. There we go. Yeah. Uh, or grill, actually not fry, no fry. No. Never fry in, in, in oil, correct? Right. Uh, unless, so do it in a saute pan with a little olive oil and just grill it. Or uh, tofu is the clown, correct? So I call it a clown because it, it becomes whatever flavor you want it to become. So what you do is um, marinate it in soy, soy sauce or low sodium soy sauce, and then grill it. And the only thing it does is just it just gives it that a little, take the flavor, the soy flavor that it, that is made of away. So it neutralizes. So the soy sauce actually does not incorporate that much salt into it, but you don't need salt on the recipe. Like here, we didn't right. use salt. So what I'm doing is I'm adding, uh, for the tofu, I'm adding the, soy, the sodium that equals to smoked salmon. And then when you mix it with the recipe, now you have a 100% plant, plant-based uh, wrap, okay? there's obviously sodium added to smoked salmon because that's the process. Correct, that's the process so, of yeah. brining. Good. Okay, so that is a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> so now we have, uh, go ahead, Megan. Feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat box and we will move on to our next recipe, papaya lassi. So, papaya. Let's talk about papaya. <laughs> so
So I'm going to move this over here and this out of the way. Sorry, let me get organized and clean house. Uh, Papaya is growing in the Caribbean uh, naturally. Um, uh, we can get it all year round. So how to pick a good papaya? So I brought three different versions here of papaya. So we have the fully ripe papaya. And the skin of the papaya should be nice and, and yellowish, kind of, and very thin to the meat. So you actually, um, you can even use a potato peeler and peel it if you like. Um, then we have, this one is from a Mexican papaya. Um, this is green. So what, what it means is, is uh, it's harvest too soon. So what we do, correct, because we don't want to go to the farmer's market every day, so we buy some high green and then put it in the kitchen counter and wait for the spoiling process to take over. What I mean by that, it's not going to get spoiled, it will get ripened before it gets spoiled, right? right? Mm -hmm. So at, the, at that period when it turns nice and yellow and you touch it, it's nice and soft, then you are gonna consume it and eat it. Now, you're not getting the full 100% uh, nutrients out of it, but papaya is so strong that you will get a lot of, more than any other fruit, okay? And I think what people try to shy away is from the seeding, peeling it, it's not as simple as, as we might think. So let's, let's give it a shot here. So if I'm going to peel the papaya, uh, I'm just going to cut both ends upside down. Of course, wash it, correct? Right. Skin is on the tree. We get it, I get it pre-washed, but always at the house from a produce company or from the supermarket, I always take it home and wash it. So then I just take this knife or a small knife and peel it. I like, I like, to, sorry, I like to use my regular knife. And then, so let the knife follow, okay? Now, instead of cutting this way, I'd be cutting blind because I won't be able to see where I'm cutting. So I turn it this way. Now I know where the skin is, and I follow the skin, right? So it makes it that much easier. Yeah. So great fruit packed with lots of vitamins, C, A, E, high in fiber, but it is also high in potassium. So again, for those watching potassium with kidney issues, mm -hmm. what other fruit could we use instead of papaya? Chef, could we use? Um, well, you can use uh, any, any tropical. So you want to do okay. mango. Mango sets very well for it. High but in potassium But it's well. high in potassium also, it correct? It is high so, in potassium, yeah. So, uh, you know, there is there is no substitution for papaya. Papaya okay. is uh, is unique. So and again, just in all in about world. portion size, smaller uh, portion possibly. But uh, one thing is guaranteed: will regulate your gut. It will regulate you. Okay, papaya. You know, you you, you go to a hospital. We 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 give out prunes, correct? Right. Papaya is equally to the prunes. It's high fiber. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it will help your digestive system greatly, believe me, greatly. So how would a commercial go? So a commercial would go like this. If you're over 60 and you don't eat papaya, you might be constipated. <laughs> so anyway, to get that out of the way, uh, try to get a papaya in once in a while you die, at least once a week or some, you know, it will help out. Okay, if you, if you watch your potassium, then uh, do it just once a week. If yeah. you're not, then right. do it more often. Do more often, exactly. Okay. And then cut it right in half. And you got, you see, that's the other piece that people are like, oh my God, that's, you know. But stay, it's okay. Now, one of the tricks with this is, uh, since it's hanging from the tree on this side, normally this side is very hard. So try to do this triangle cut and get it out of the way. 
okay? Yes, you don't need that. And then, and then you just peel it, correct? So I'm just gonna make a mess here just because. And then just, see how easy it just comes all in one. easy to do. Correct. Very simple. You just have to be calm. <laughs> there you go. Correct. And try not to do yay, correct? Because then it's all over. Right. Okay, these seeds, if you do that, you see I just touched them and it's all over the place, correct? So you'll find on the floor and they, ah, I'm not doing papaya no more. Right. No, 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 no. Make it simple. Um, so, let's do and then you just cut in wedges. And you can cut it ahead of time, put it in the refrigerator, good for three days, um, and then eat a part of your breakfast. All right? So cutting into half inch cubes. And then half inch cubes, and you're good to go. That's it. Okay. Are we ready to make a drink? We are ready. Okay, let's make the drink. So our drink calls for uh, lime, papaya, mint, Greek yogurt, honey, and some ice cubes. Uh, this and papaya, and I'm just going to make it. Different colors, and it's okay. They're both ripe, but they're in both different colors. It's okay. So what I'm going to do is, how many cups is that for the papaya? Two cups? Um, it just it says eight ounces. One oh, small even ripe better. papaya, eight ounces. Eight cut ounces. into the half inch cube. So eight ounces would be something like yeah. yeah. Do they have different flavors? No. With a different color. No, no, it's just a different color, but uh, same flavor. So Greek yogurt, you're going to have a little more protein, correct? Yes, so. Greek yogurt does have more. And this is the plain fat-free, so fat lowering free. carbs, yeah. no fat. A little bit of honey. So a little bit of honey doesn't significantly add to the carbs in this drink, just gives it a little flavor. And the meat leaves. How many of you home has uh, mint leaf growing everywhere? So put them to good use. <laughs> put them in your drink, uh, put them on your salads. Uh, mint is very nutritional, uh, potent. It helps also, like this drink is pure digestive system. Uh, mega, how you call? How we, let's give it a name. <laughs> Besides Lassie, Lassie <laughs> sounds wimpy. I want this is like, yeah, it will take care of your gut big yeah. time. All right, one more. Mm, I think I'm good. So now to break down the the honey, so we're gonna put a little lime juice, okay? And it's okay if you don't have lime, use lemon. But lime has more acidity, and we're looking for that when it comes to blending. And then to help everything blend together, we, we need to use a little bit, a few of the ice cubes, correct? So and You forgot one thing. Shane. What did I forget? The, the oh, cardamom? Oh, no, yeah. no. No, I did not. Okay. okay it's Saving coming. the best for It's coming. It's coming. So cardamom, you can do it right now. And at the end, oh, right. just watch. Okay. How many teaspoons of this? Quarter. Quarter. Te that's all. Yeah. You know, a quarter man is. Um, yeah, quarter in and then some on top, like you said at the end too. This this spice is very underrated. A lot of people don't use it because they don't understand 
what car the man is, mm -hmm. okay, what is it for, correct? So it's a pot and it gets ground and it comes in different colors, but, um, but you can add it for um, if Indian recipe, masala, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually uh, use it for chicken marsala and, and season it with that, but you can, uh, actually it's like a licorice, uh, the, the kind of taste to it, so it helps out uh, It helps out flavor the drink that you're making, and it's also very help. Very, it's an antioxidant. Now, for it to work, you have to kind of part of the whole bottle, but <laughs> you can, yeah. and it will not be pleasant. So no. here we go. We're gonna make some noise now. I couldn't make any perfect. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder why I'm a chef. Look, so it has to be a smoothie type, correct? So it has to be nice and thick. And look at that. Look at that. Nice and thick. Nice and thick. Okay. So then. Garnish. Just in that corner there. And since papaya is from the tropics, well, let's give it an art kit. Ooh. Or, better yet, let's see. That one do. That one do. This one do. Ah, here you go. A little pancit. Little pancit edible flowers right here. And these are edible, so you can actually eat it, drink it. Okay. So, this drink with those wraps, call it a day, right? Amazing. Um, like I said, papaya is so underrated. Uh, people look at it and they see a lot of pitted skin and uh, they walk away because they think it's spoiling or it's not good. Actually, normally they start spoiling. I'm gonna show you something. Normally, you're gonna start spoiling right here at the tip where it hangs from the tree. So, if you see a spoil, well, guess what you're gonna do when you go home? You're gonna take that off, cut it off, and it's gonna be perfect. Okay, even though it looks like it's spoiled, it is a perfect papaya. But we are accustomed that if it's spoiled, if it doesn't look perfect, yeah. we won't buy it. And trust me, supermarkets throw away so many, so much food because they're imperfect. Uh, I think there are commercials about it, about uh, start buying imperfect produce. Um, and we have to be aware of that, that imperfect produce still really good products. They just mm -hmm. ripe and they're ready and they, yeah. they're just amazing. Um, but we're not, we haven't been um, groomed that way. Let's right. put it that right. way in a sense of uh, what's fresh, what's uh, so everything that looks nice and beautiful is uh, is what's perfect, and sometimes it's not. Is uh, uh, you have to wait. This one looks really cool, correct? But now you have, you put it in the kitchen counter, and you just wait. And every day you walk by it, and you just wait. And you walk by, and you just wait. And then the day you forget about it, it spoils, and you have to throw them in the trash. <laughs> But like you right. said, if it starts spoiling just a little, you right can kind here, of just save a little. it, cut it off, cut it out, and, and you, you know, can even wrap it and put it in the refrigerator. Correct. Just if you couldn't eat it that day. Correct. Possibly. If you don't eat it, just cut it, wrap it, put it in the refrigerator. You know, it's ready to go anytime you want. So it's like going to a farmer's market, but you're in a supermarket. Okay. Um, sometimes they get they get pitted on on the ends, and that's uh, handling. So when they get handled, they get dropped, they get pushed, they got so those are bruises. Correct. And um, so uh, you don't want to go that route because too many, uh, too many potentials, uh, skin opening, 
that now is leaving the flesh open to, to bacteria and spoilage. So that, that just stay away. But if it is just a little on the tip, a little bit of um, uh, mold, then you're okay. You can slice that off and, and it's all good. Good tip. That's how we make cheese, crack with mold. Mm -hmm. uh, should we make another one? Sure. Let's see, do I have any Greek? Yeah, I have a little bit of Greek yogurt. So let's make a, let's finish it. This one is, uh, let's call it the leftover lazy. Lassi or lassi. Honey. Since we have time, maybe somebody didn't see the process. Yeah. I know you guys weren't watching. <laughs> maybe I think you guys just are talking to in. each other. Huh? They could be just joining in. Yeah, you could be just joining. That's true. I suppose if you wanted to add a little extra water, if you oh, didn't yeah. like it thick, you could definitely make it to your taste. Mm. Ready for noise? I don't want to still. So if you want to add more water and get it more uh, um, a little liquidy, bit thinner consistency thinner. depends how you like that. it. Yeah. Okay. So that's our last Z. Should we put an edible flour there too? No. Just kidding. So they sell uh, produce markets. They also sell your garnish, and uh, we try to do everything edible. So uh, if I garnish a plate for you, it should be edible. It should be something that is on the plate. So everything that is on the plate should be edible. Uh, it should not be any plastic with food or anything um, like that. So uh, we try to make sure everything is edible. Uh, here I could garnish a little bit of cute papaya, but uh, it's no need to do that. Or even another sprig of mint too. Correct. To do more mint. Oh, I like you. Look, <laughs> let's do that. Mira. So right here. Whatever so let's dress process. it up. I put yeah. that little um, right. flower, but you don't have. So you, since you use mint, then you put it with mint, correct? Yeah. So you can see. Are you able to see the cardamom and the, and the mint in there? So let's see. You able to see it right now? Yeah, probably. Okay. So so a little sprinkle cardamom with a mm -hmm. uh, little flower, and that works out pretty good. Um, Megan, I don't know. That was easy. That was really cool. That's and simple and easy. And, and trust fresh. me, this, this, the papaya will regulate you. A hundred percent. I know that um, I, th there is another commercial that talks about bowel movement and, and regularity and, and having in being able to uh, 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 avoid being constipated. But get you papaya, get some prunes. But get your papaya, give it a shot. Just give it a shot for a week or so. Uh, if you uh, if you don't have any um, protein, uh, what is it? Oh, no, potassium. Uh, potassium. Yeah, if you, have you can do it once a week with you if you have to watch your potassium because of your kidneys once a week, just knowing that's a high potassium food for the week, but you could do that. And I think it's great to get something more natural you know, most adults don't get enough fiber, so we're always looking to get more fiber from fruits, vegetables, whole grains. So this is a good, it's a higher fiber fruit to choose. Um, helps with blood sugar and every, and to regulate your, your digestive health, fight inflammation, lots of good benefits. Correct. And who knew? 
adding Greek yogurt to a drink, right? A lot of people separate all those ingredients and no, just uh, Greek yogurt is great. You don't have to worry, you don't have to use the almond milk or the coconut milk, all those, you know, just change it up a little bit. So uh, Greek, yo Greek yogurt, uh, uh, fat-free, uh, plain Greek yogurt and uh, your papaya will go a long way. Um, so, hi. So please, any questions that you have, please put them in the chat box. We're happy to answer them. Looks like we're waiting possibly on a question. Yeah. All right. So <coughs> let's talk about um, when is our next diabetes club? Do you? So our next, our next session will be August 16th. So another summertime one, but it's going to focus on dinner, summertime mm -hmm. dinner favorites. So this is sort of more appetizer and we'll be doing some summer. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, here we go, Chef. Can frozen mango or papaya be used? Yes. Great, great question. Yes. Okay. So frozen, uh, uh, the way the industries are going with uh, freezing your produce, uh, they wait for the harvest to be a, a peak perfection to freeze it, and then they use a, a method of freezing it that it will not, it will preserve as many nutrients as possible. So you probably, be better off using the frozen uh, um, uh, uh, fruit than the fresh one because the fresh one, if it is picked too early, it doesn't have all the nutrients as the frozen one has the nutrients already uh, in it uh, because it's being harvested to the peak, uh, peak uh, ripeness to be able to process it and, and give it to you. Uh, the only problem with uh, freezing is um, the texture. It changes the texture. So freezing, uh, cold freezing uh, is like a, um, when something is frozen, it's like stab wounds into the meat of the papaya, correct? And then when you defrost, it just oozes out all the flavor. But if you're gonna use it for a smoothie, it's just perfect, okay? If you're gonna use it just to eat it as is, so then try to mix it with something. Uh, and something would be uh, granola, um, uh, yogurt, um, uh, something that it will incorporate would take out the moisture of the freezer. I call it the freezer stabbing, and and the oozing of the liquid. It will take it and it will incorporate it into the flavor of when you eat in it. So, yeah, and that would be great if you don't want to go through the process of taking the seeds out and cutting. I know some people don't do a lot of cooking or preparing, but that's a quicker, mm -hmm. easy way just to kind of throw together this great summertime drink. All right. Okay, another question, Chef. What kind of flatbread do you use? You want to talk a little bit more so about the flatbread? This one I went to Trader Joe's. Um, most um, um, uh, world markets have it. Trader Joe's have it. Um, uh, they all make basically the same way, just different manufacturers. But <clears throat> any flatbread will, will do its purpose. Uh, just look at the back for the nutritionals. And you see this one, the whole flat bread has 110 calories. But that's why we, when we incorporate all the different items into the recipe, then we cut them in four, and then you have, you know, 90 calories here and there. Right, right. <clears throat> so, so um, just, just look for, and, and you will, what, what's gonna happen is, as you get to use it a little bit more, you will have to experiment with different uh, brands and you will get to find your brand. Now, uh, <clears throat> if you live in Huntington Beach or around this area in Irvine, there's a wall market in Irvine that they actually make their own. So you can get a nice, fresh, hot of the oven. Um, and and that, that's fantastic, that's really cool. So uh, the wall market uh, in, in Irvine, they do have it. Uh, uh, that's a, a fun place to go if you like to shop uh, different foods. And again, would encourage a whole wheat or one that has fiber in it. So mm -hmm. you can look again at the label. This one has two grams. I mean, the more the better, but that's going to at least add some more fiber, some more good nutrition mm -hmm. to um, the flatbread. Mm -hmm. And again, the carbs are definitely, I mean, this is a pretty big one, 21 grams of carbs. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That's pretty good for that's such a big size because yeah. it's thinner and flatter mm -hmm. as opposed to like a thicker piece of bread or especially something like bagels that just have a lot of carbs in them. This is obviously, it's a thinner bread, so Correct. less carbs. And we're watching carbs when we have diabetes. 
And if you look at it, they helping you out by specifying this is good for dipping, this is good for wraps. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they, they already, uh, the manufacturer is doing 75% uh, of the work for you. The only thing you have to do is fill it up, wrap it up, and eat it. Yeah. Right. So, so they, they have worked out some of the issues uh, that they may have with the flour and the fat that they put in there. And again, it's all about the portion size. So if you think that this whole thing is too much or too many carbs, you just cut the portion size in half, Correct. which obviously we did anyways with the Correct. way that we made the wraps today. Um, so cut, really it, depends cut it in things. half, correct? Cut it in half, uh -huh. wrap it, yep. put it in the refrigerator for and tomorrow, yeah, and then true. you tell the half. Yeah, because really the carbs from the salmon and arugula wraps, the carbs are really coming just from the wrap itself. So the, the insides really don't have carbs mm -hmm. in it. So it's just, and that's something to think about too you know, what you're going to put into it, what are your carb needs, you know, what are you going to put in it? You could add, because it's easy to add carbs to things Correct. too, so thinking about that too. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, we hope you will join us again um, August 16th, Tuesday. Um, we hope that you will join us then, and again, please make sure to register for that. And until then, stay healthy, stay happy. And if you have any needs for diabetes, diabetes education, any kind of nutritional services, please, we hope that you'll reach out to us at the Mary and Dick Allen Diabetes Center at Hogue. Thank you all. Have a great night. Stay healthy. Good night.